smoke coming out the chimney. Whew. Middle of winter out here. I'm not sure if I uploaded the videos from December, but I didn't film much. I was out here in December for a while, but I kind of just hung out by myself and didn't really worry about YouTube. YouTube's kind of falling apart right now anyways. A bunch of liberals over there. Um, which, don't get me wrong, I'm a constitutional libertarian, but these people have gone way off the left edge of the cliff. And it sucks. But uh, my neighbor helped me out, cleared, he was clearing the end of the driveway so there wasn't all that hard, par all that hard packed ice snow when I got up here. And uh, still had to do a, about an hour of shoveling, but now it's all clear. And the escape is parked at the end of the road on the other side of the gate. I uh, just gotta unload the car and get camp all set up. And we should be here into February. And then I'll go back home for a couple weeks at the end of February to get everything ready for spring. And then come back out here in March and be out here until November. But hunting season's pretty much over. There is rabbit season, but I didn't renew my hunting license, which expired at the end of the at the beginning of the year. So I could go to town, I guess, and renew that if I really want to. But I usually don't hunt rabbits. But I don't know. Maybe I'll feel like it this year. Well, the stove's cranking in the background. Only got about half an hour left until dark, though. So I got to get the car unloaded and get camp set up. Man, I got this epic new headlamp. My neighbor Joe sent it to me for Christmas. And it is so bright. Like, you can see the whole cabin in here. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have a little sandwich wrap. Melting snow. Got snow on the stove so it doesn't get super dry in here. Um, pretty cold out here, but I'm pretty psyched. This wood stove is getting this cabin pretty warm and it's just awesome that light prize is shining you out but that it's awesome having a cabin that i can just heat when it's like 17 degrees outside it just is crazy to have a cabin that's 70 degrees right now still blows me away that stove stove is making it happen that's the camp chef um, from Amazon, the $200 stove hooked up to the regular house chimney. And I like that stove because I have all the attachments that go with it. But I imagine if you burn it all winter, you probably only get a couple of winters out of it and have to replace it. Or at least maybe get a winter or two out of it and then put it down at the canvas tents and replace it in the cabin. But yeah, pitch dark in here. It's pretty late in the evening. But I was just thinking about how psyched I am that that the stove keeps this place heated when it's that cold outside. It's awesome. It uh, gets me pumped about this spring. Hopefully we can get a lot of stuff done. Try to grow like hundreds of pumpkins next year. I think that would be cool. Alright, morning time, day two. <sighs> Another beautiful, epically quiet night at the cabin. It's so insulated in here and it's so quiet up here that you don't hear anything all night. It's crazy. Um, I'd probably sleep straight through the night if it wasn't for the cold. But it got down to about 10 degrees last night and it was cold enough that I had to get up at four in the morning. I had to get up at midnight and at four in the morning to stoke the stove. And then when I got up at seven, it was uh, still some little coals in there. I just threw a piece of cardboard in there and some, some sticks and started right back up. Um, it didn't get like cold enough that I was freezing in my sleeping bag, but it got like probably down to about 40 degrees in here. 
And then I would wake up and notice that it was cold. And I could have stayed sleeping in my sleeping bag, but I wanted to keep the stove going. <clears throat> These first couple days, you know, while you're trying to heat up everything in the cabin and heat the insulation and everything, um, you know, you got to keep the stove going. By the end of tonight, by tomorrow morning, I'll probably just let the stove go out at night for like four or five hours. And then the wood of the cabin should be warm enough that by morning... It's only about 40 degrees, but last night if I didn't re if I didn't restoke it after 12, I would have woke up this morning. It probably would have been about 20 degrees in here, which would have been pretty damn cold. Too cold to get up and get going. Yeah, it's really cold outside. 10 degrees, pretty freezing. Looks pretty nice out there. Look at that. Winter Wonderland. But our wood pile is getting low because we burnt kind of a lot last night because it was really cold. And we don't want to like chip away at that wood, wood pile too much. And there's no garden work or anything to do during the winter, so there's nothing to do anyway. So we're going to get some snow bibs on and some boots and two pairs of socks. And then we're going to head out into the woods and look for a sled full of wood. And if I bring a sled full of wood back every two days, we should be able to keep that wood pile pretty much intact out there. And then it's going to snow. In three days, it's going to snow for about two or three days straight. Probably get a couple feet. And right now, down home, everybody's worried about the coronavirus. Because it is... I think it's February 1st today. If not, it's the 31st. But I don't know. I don't know how many days are in January. But it might be February 1st. I'll look. 2020 and the coronavirus is spreading through China really fast. And that's one of the reasons why I came up to camp. I wanted to come up here and get it all ready and get everything going. <clears throat> uh, just in case my family has to come up here to get out of the city. Because my family lives down in kind of a populated city. Not like super populated, but... Still, it's a city, so... If uh, if they have to come up here, I want to get everything ready and spend some time up here. And, of course, if an epidemic or a pandemic is starting to unfold down in the city, I'd rather just be up at camp the whole time so I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> well, I fill the water pot because it's steaming off and it's almost empty. And... Then I'll get all the snow gear on, and we'll go head out into the woods, get some firewood. I also have a new rifle with me that I want to shoot. Actually, it's not a rifle, it's a pistol. I have a new pistol that I want to shoot. Um, I'm excited about it, so I'm going to get out there and do some of that today, too. Well, I'm already out of breath. That's what happens when you let yourself get fat and lazy during the winter. Um... Glad to be back out here. But I'm just walking around collecting as much firewood as I can find. And as you can see, there's a lot of it. There's two dead standing right there. That I kept standing because it's close to camp. Camp's right there. So all the dead wood I kept standing right here so it would be nice and dry. So I could come and get it in the winter. So here we are. Bunch of nice pieces though. I'd say what we have here in those two sticks right there is enough for tonight and tomorrow morning. So if I just keep on collecting wood like this every day or two, we should be able to keep most of that wood pile sitting there and have plenty of wood to get through the winter. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna be here for the entire rest of the winter, but um, um, half of February and then March, I probably won't be here that much, just here and there. But then in April, it's still cold enough to run the stove, so I need to run the stove in April. And then in May, everything will be back to being warm, and the bugs will be here, and the gardens will be growing. So 
Looking forward to that, but until then, we're going to be spending our times collecting firewood so we can stay warm. I did burn more firewood last night than I had previous, but it got down to almost zero degrees, so it's the coldest night in the cabin yet. Still stayed warm, just had to wake up a couple times and stoke the stove. Uh, that's how it goes when you have a small stove in a small cabin. I get up and stoke it in the middle of the night. <clears throat> like Nesmick says, take a little snip from the pipe, stock the stove, and then go back to bed. Well, there's a sled full there. Not too thick, but that's good stuff to get it, um, get it ripping again in the middle of the night. A couple pieces here. That's definitely enough for tonight into tomorrow, but that was only like 15 minutes of work. I have so much dead stuff out here. And then I have all the stuff that I threw to the side of the trails this summer when I made the trails. So all that stuff um, is all dry now and dead. So I just cut it all up and put it on the sled. Probably, probably get two or three sleds today. And then if we don't if we have other stuff we want to do tomorrow, we won't necessarily have to collect wood tomorrow. Or I can just collect wood every single day and then take a couple days off later in the week. My birthday is later this week. I turned 35. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I was up here for my birthday. Hang out by myself for my 35th birthday. By the fire. Chilling in the cabin in the woods. It's not bad. So quiet out here in the winter. Like, during the summer, the forest is so loud, you can barely even hear yourself think. But in the winter, none of the sounds of the bugs or the birds or anything are going. Um, I'm not sure which one I like more. It's nice when it's quiet, I guess, but it's kind of too quiet. During the summer, it's the noises that kind of work in your brain. When it's this quiet, all you can hear is yourself thinking. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep collecting this firewood. Well, collected a whole bunch of wood today. Lots of it, still double that outside. And cooking up one of these marinated tenderloins, pork tenderloin. So brown it on four sides and then take it off and cut it into little cutlets and then put those on and sear them on both sides. Should be delicious. Probably just gonna have those by themselves, that by itself tonight. Don't feel like cooking anything else. Good productive day. It's about five o'clock, five thirty, and it's pitch dark out there. Pitch dark in here if I turn off the headlamp. Stove, pretty warm in here this morning. Cold. The light's still on in this damn camera. Uh, pretty cold last night, but the fire's cranking, still cranking. And I split some really big um, elm logs I have and cut that up and put a couple of those in and it burned all through the entire night. It was still coals left in the morning and the stove was still hot. So I gotta get some of those cause at night that's obviously what I need to do is put some really thick elms on a nice small bed of coals so it goes slowly after I've already heated the cabin up. So that's the plan. Got some water on. Got a bunch of wood today. Just, uh, just uh, boiling up some water for some coffee or some tea. I'm not sure. I'm trying to decide. Spent the day gathering firewood again and went for a walk around the property. Lots of animal tracks, uh, a lot of coyote tracks and some lynx tracks and tons of moose tracks. This property has got a lot of animals moving around here at this time of year. 
Um, it's super crunchy though because of the snow, so I'm probably not going to sneak up on anything. But I at least can follow all the tracks and see where they're going and see what they're doing at this time of year. It's pretty fun. Other than that, there's not much going on. I mean, I gather wood during the daylight hours and I'm just hanging out, but there's no building projects or anything like that going on at this time of year, so I haven't really doing much filming, but there isn't really that much to film. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm basically just collecting wood and, you know, it gets dark at like almost five o'clock now, which isn't that bad. It's starting to get a little bit longer each day, but, uh, for the most part, as soon as it gets dark, I just listen to some books on tape. I'm listening to my second Jewel, Jules Verne's book, um, since I've gotten up here, and it's the third book of a, th of a three book series. So that's what I do for entertainment at, at night. It doesn't use much battery in the phone, and um, it doesn't use up much memory in the phone either, so I can put a lot of books on the phone, plus the books take a long time, so it's a good way to spend a couple hours every single night, and then go to bed early and wake up early. But yeah. Winter in a small cabin in Maine, there's definitely not much going on. I'm just working firewood all the time. Um, if, I, if, if I had collected, if I had cut like six or seven cords of firewood and had it split and everything, then I wouldn't have to do this. But um, then I really don't know what I would do all winter. <laughs> at least, at least, you know, with me having to come up with a certain amount of firewood, I am out there in the woods every day looking for firewood. I suppose I would just be out there looking for animals, and um, it's still rabbit season, so I would probably be doing some rabbit hunting, maybe. But in general, all the seasons that I like doing are over. So yeah, just chilling out. Sun's about to go down. Gonna have some coffee. Four days left till my birthday. It's Sunday. Uh, just going for a hike in the woods. I'm actually gonna go and get on this trail to where the red blaze is that marks the wildlife management land. And I'm gonna walk the whole wildlife management land, the line on my line, and then walk back. So I'm gonna walk the whole perimeter of the property right now. Everything's frozen, so it should be pretty easy travel. The snow that's on the ground isn't that deep and it's pretty hard. So should be able to make it all the way around. Didn't bring a backpack, just brought my compass, my jacket, and then I have a water bottle on my belt. Um, so, heading out. Let's go check out and see what this whole property really looks like. There's a couple of spots I haven't made it to yet. So, it's going to be cool. Alright, there's the red marker. And there they are all the way down. So... I think it turns right over there, which is my line. I'm still on the neighbor's line because I kind of veered off. Veered off the trail I was supposed to be keeping. But the snow is not as frozen as I would like it to be. And it's making it so it is pretty hard to get through some spots. Any of the wet spots that I thought was going to be iced over, I could just go over. It's not iced over. It's been kind of a warm winter. So I just post hole. So I kind of took the the outer skirts, which is a little drier, which is mostly my neighbor's property. But these red lines... Oh, back at camp, got food on. That was quite a haul. I only made it to basically a point I had already made it to at one point on that red line. But I was just post hole and it got pretty deep as I got further out into the, out into the woods. So I either have to get some snowshoes or try to do that trek in the spring, but then it's a lot of water. Fall was when it was the driest, so um, I guess maybe another shot at it in fall, but I really want to get to that corner of the property I haven't gotten to. It's just it's so wet that unless it's frozen over hard, it's hard to get through there. But next year, hopefully, it'll be a little bit colder than this, and... Uh, yeah, maybe there'll be more ice, but maybe there'll never be ice here again. I don't know. Who knows? Global warming, you never know. Climate change is happening. We're all around us.
Oh, got the cabin heated up. Wind is howling. See that? Big thick layer of ice. And it's really heavy. I gotta get it off of the roof. Um, I should have done this the first day I was here. Um, for some reason that door is starting to pinch at the top. Which means the building is shifting a little bit. I'm not sure why it's doing that. But it's not a good thing. So it might just be this weight on the roof. I already cleaned off the other side. But the other side is the side that gets the sun. So most of the other side was melting. This side is not melting. It's a lot harder to get it off this side. But I got to get it off before the snow comes tomorrow. So I'm using this stick with like a flat edge carved onto it to get under the ice. Try not to ruin the roof. So that's the mission today. Well, I've been up here for like, I don't know, six days now. Haven't been filming much because it's winter and there's not much going on. But the door was starting to jam right there, which means the building was shifting. Um, we've kind of had melting temperatures and then freezing temperatures, then melting and then freezing again. So you get frost heave, which will shift your building a little. So I was getting all bummed because it was getting really tight up there and it wasn't latching anymore. The latch wasn't even. So I was wondering how the hell I'm going to lock this place up when I have to go. But because I'm a prepper and I'm paranoid, I had a floor jack in my car because I prefer if I get a flat tire to have a full size spare and a floor jack in the car instead of one of those, you know, shitty crank jacks. So I cleared the snow right here. I jacked it up a little and put a board in there. And now the door shuts perfectly. So that was an easy fix. And I can see that the level is level now. Once I put the level on it, I could see this side was much higher. So I put a board right there. And now the door shuts. Man, I'm glad I carry so much crap. Um, it always bums me out because I always have so much shit in the vehicle. But I'm glad I had that jack today because now the door latches and will lock if I have to go somewhere. Um, which I'm going to go back down home for a couple weeks before spring starts here. Oh yeah, still just hanging out in the cabin in the winter, February. One day left until my birthday. I turned 35 up here. And then it's supposed to snow. It's supposed to snow on my birthday and the snow the day after. And then after that I'm going to have to go to town for food and stuff. Oh, I might go to town tomorrow and grab food before the snowstorm comes because, I don't know, I could get snowed in here, I guess, for a couple days. Yeah, things is... Camp in the winter. So I haven't shot this bad boy in a little while. There are the pellets, 22 caliber pellets. But this is a Gamo Express shotgun pellet gun. So it takes little shotgun shells, which shoots out like, I don't know, 13, 14, number 7 BBs. Which is good for small birds, and I've even shot rabbits with it. And then it takes 22 caliber pellets with an adapter. And I'll tell everybody, you should definitely have a pellet gun. And if you're going to get one, get one in 22 caliber. But this is pretty much the best one that you can get, I think. I mean, it's not really good. It's not the best one you can get for all things. Because it's not good for, for far distance shooting. But for close range, which most small game that you'd be hunting with a pellet gun, you'll do close range. This definitely does the job. And you can use pellets, 22 caliber pellets, which are pretty cheap. And then there's these little shotgun shells. I'll go grab some and I'll show you. Alright, so this is what the shell... Oh, I just dropped it. Alright, so this is what the shell looks like. It's as big as a 22 caliber. It has a little plastic thing on both sides. And inside are the pellets. Um, I've never seen the plastic things. So I'm not sure what happens to those. Uh, I imagine it's like a shotgun shell and it just pops out. But this right here is the adapter. So this adapter is so you can shoot pellets, and that adapter comes out, it's a sleeve, 
So you put that in there and then you can shoot 22 caliber pellets. Or you put the shotgun shell in here. And the shotgun shell is really good for small game or if you have a rat problem or something, this one does really good. Let's go look at the target. All right, so this is the target. These two are 5.56 five, from a different shoot. But these, all of these are 22 caliber pellets from that gun. And they're moving pretty fast. It's about um, 1,200 feet per second. But these little dots, these, all these little dots are from the shotgun shell. And that's from one shot at about... Um, I don't know, 15 yards. So the spread is about as big as my hand at 15 yards. Number seven pellets are in it. And if these are pretty expensive, or I don't have it, but the, the shotgun shells are pretty expensive if you buy them um, online. But you can keep the plastic and you can reload them with number seven shot and use them over again. I haven't tried doing that, but a lot of guys online say that they do it successfully. But for hunting small game, if you have a squirrel problem, or you know, it's just a good idea to put in your survival kit a pellet gun because you never know when you're not going to be able to get ammo, or maybe, God forbid, laws change or something. Having a good pellet gun is uh, definitely good backup, and it's really cheap for ammo for a pellet gun. And if you had to, you could make ammo for a pellet gun pretty easily, too. So, yeah. There's my Gammo Express shotgun pellet gun.